Night has fallen and you're weary from travel. Stars fill the sky above, and in front of you is a brightly lit wooden house, the only building you've seen for days. <clears throat> Hello everyone, I'm Walt here, and welcome to the stream. It's not going to be a huge stream, just wanted to kind of get to playing this game. Um, one thing I'm not sure about is that this game has a way for me to quiet it down. I am going to look into that real fast. But, okay. Okay, no. Anyway, so. Night has fallen and you're weary from travel. Stars fill the sky above, and in front of you is a brightly lit, brightly lit wooden house. The only building you've seen for days. Give me a sec to pull some things up here. We'll make sure to have that open, because it is always good to have that open. Go to the house. You walk toward the house, hearing the sounds of laughter and talk as you reach the door and push it open. Oh. Well, that's interesting. You sit down and join the game. It's a cheap buy-in, and not many of the other players are very good. Ooh. We're not going after their um, skill, are we? The lady fiddling with dice gets good cards, but has no real strategy. The man to your right seems to just hold on to the highest cards he has, regardless of suit or any consideration of matches. Let me change this again. I already, I still messed that up. So, this game... Is a is a smaller sort of game, not really huge per se, and I look forward to it. This is definitely something that I I mostly know of this game from Ryan Ike, a music artist I listen to. He did basically the entire soundtrack for this game. Okay. There we are. Sure, we'll see stuff. Dropping a bit rate. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try and turn down the game a little bit. On stream, watching. And uh, chat, just let me know if it's still too loud, okay? Because I cannot tell. The man in gray across from you, though, he's good. He already had the largest pile of coins when you bought in, and while your winnings grow quickly, you can't quite catch him. Hmm. One by one, the other players leave the table, sometimes with peak or with wry humor, leaving their winnings with you or the man in gray. Playing. So here's me. They are. They're walking off one by one. Just me and him. 
Finally, it's just you and the man in gray. He looks at you, full of humor and winks. Last hand? I like that grin, but yeah, it's the one I can do, so last hand, and then... He deals, you draw, and look at your hand. It's good. It's great. The best hand, in fact. A royal straight flush. Spades. Aces high. Nothing can beat me. I actually don't want to play poker, so this makes no sense to me. But the man in gray pushes forward his whole pile. You're not sure exactly how much it is, but it's more than you've got. You can't match that. Hold. The man in gray stops you. Now, if you like, I'll let you wager your word. I know you'll be good for it. Just promise you'll pay the debt. However I ask. Yep. Ten, jack, queen, king, ace. All spades. Ooh, you have my word. The man in gray smiles. All right, then. I'll call. Um. Okay, that's a new one. There it is. Let's see how the game begins. Well, your luck wasn't so good, was it? That's quite the hand, but not for the game we're playing. I'm afraid you owe me. Your life, sure. But more than that, your labor. So Ryan Ike is possibly one of the best guys, like the best video game music artist I've seen in a while. And honestly, his music resonates very well. He's also the artist who did um, West of Loathing. And that soundtrack, I would absolutely love to play West of Loathing on stream at some point. That game is fun. I'm also kind of screwed in some ways. Okay, Mr. Direwolf. You see, this land is built on stories. It's one big story, this country, woven of many small ones. Few of the small ones are strictly true, and the big story is mostly a lie. You tell me more. All the stories and songs and myths and legends start somewhere, with a seed. As they're told and retold and passed around, they grow and change to become the stories we know. How did you get my cards? To pay your debt to me, you'll be carrying stories. Finding the seeds first and then spreading them. Telling them onwards so they can begin gaining strength. This is no light task. Stories are heavy. Most of the stories you'll find will be small seeds. They might be true, but they'll grow wild and unbelievable with the telling. The more important stories are the true ones. The ones people will tell you about their own lives. Those often get lost in the weaves of the big story. The more true stories you can find and tell, the more you can weave that truth into the big story. Tarnish it a bit, perhaps, but isn't a dingy and battered truth better than a shining lie? You got a point. Now, go ahead. You tell me a story. I'll trade you some information about your task.
tower. Justice, choice, and morality. Will of Fortune, Fortune and Fate and Love. Tell the story of tossing a pair of bone dice on a blood red velvet table. Come up snake eyes. Wait for cheap. It's just luck. Funny how bad luck seems to follow the folks who already have problems aplenty. Try your luck out there in this country. See how the dice treat you. It's not all bad. You'll have to work hard. But I'll give you the gift for seeing the true shapes of people. Not many who can do that. Travel? That's your job. Wander from place to place, gather those stories and spread them. People get bored hearing the same stories over and over. But an old cliché in one state might be a rip-roaring new yarn in another. Tell the story of the endless series of doors of different kinds, each week in four doors. You sometimes have to make choices about what kind of story you're finding. Is it a love story? Or a tragedy? Don't gather too many of one kind, though. This grand story needs variety. The world, having desires to build wishes come true. Thus there is a parting of the clouds and the falls to give a brief glimpse of the land of the fallen. Your deepest desires? Your greatest wish? Heaven? Big Rock Candy Mountain? El Dorado, the promised land? That place just over the ridge where they all say that the water tastes just like the sweetest wine. Well, I don't know where that is. It's supposed to be somewhere in this country. Ask the people you meet. They're all searching. For the same thing. Death, change, and things. Tell the story of a black and gray city where every building is filled with desiccated folks. I'll strip away your flesh to make the journey easier, but still you'll feel pain. Hunger, weariness, thirst, and despair. They're all part of stories, the part not often told. And death, yes, but don't worry. As long as your task remains, you come back. Go on your way, seeker. Maybe we'll meet again, or maybe not. Either way, it'll be an experience for you. I'm jealous in some ways. I hope you find what you're looking for. piled in the front yard, ammunition heaped under the mailbox, and a crowd of clean-cut men ripping apart a car in the driveway. 
The two heavily armed, mud-caked women leaning over the porch railing share the same bored grin. One shouts at you. Lend a couple innocent gals a cigarette? Should I? You're about to hand her a smoke when those men draw pistols and shove you hard into the dirt. You know these girls? They demand. Once they've dumped your bag out into the road, they decide you're harmless. If you were selling booze too, you'd have a lot more cash, sneers one. On the porch behind him, the two bootleggers are fingering their empty rifles, grinning in disappointment. Women arrested for bootlegging. Okay. That's much better. Um, subtitles would be on, obviously, because I need to be in English. Quality. Fantastic. But I'll see them far along. San Francisco, California. Okay, I am going. We are in the good old U.S. of A. Can I go to Canada? Can I go to Canada, please? Nope. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. Can't go to Canada yet. The two women who are arrested for bootlegging. Press H to view the in-game manual. Your goal is to fulfill your obligation to the wolf by finding all 16 characters scattered over the U.S. and trade stories to them until you earn their trust and finish their story. By having adventures, you'll begin to collect stories. When you meet characters, they'll ask you for different types of stories. Tragic, hopeful, scary, thrilling, or funny. Remember what sort of adventure you had, and you'll know what type of story you got. Stories will grow and change as you tell them. Once you tell a story to a character, it will be out in the world, and you may encounter someone else who will tell you a better version of it. These better versions will be more entertaining when you tell them to characters, but be sure to tell different stories so that you have a chance to grow them all. Stories you get from characters are wild cards. They will fit any of five categories. Any of the five categories. However, telling them will not cause them to grow. So use them sparingly. As you're giving up a chance to spread other stories. But telling them will not cause them to grow. If you want to swap around the stories you tell, you can do the, you can do that in the inventory. There are several ways to travel across the United States. The easiest is walking, but it's slow. You can speed up your walking pace by whistling. Hold down the button to match the notes to keep your sprints, to keep your spirits and speed hot up. You can scroll for more details. You can also hop a ride on a box car. This will get you exactly where you need to go, but runs the risk of getting injured by the railroad cops. Hop a ride, find a train yard. A safer way to travel is hitchhiking. Hitchhike, hold the hi hold the hitchhike button while standing next to a road with cars on it. Not every car will stop, but they won't always carry you the full and they won't always carry you the full distance. But you will be safe. Finally, if you've got some cash, you can go to a city and ride the fast, safe passenger trains from place to place. It costs money, but it is the best way to travel. Each time you meet a character, you'll have a night to talk with them and exchange stories. If you tell them the kind of stories they want, you'll gain their trust and move forward through their tale. However, there's no penalty to telling them a different story. 
You will still learn whatever they have to tell you. Characters have multiple chapters, and when you fully open the eye in the, inf in the interface, the next time you meet them, you'll move on to the next chapter. When you finish all the chapters, you won't see them again. Each time you finish a night with a character, it moves somewhere else. You can always check the map to see where they are, but they will also show you when they move. The inventory holds the mementos you've collected from the characters you've met. Once a character trusts you fully, they'll give you something to remember them by, which can be used to travel to where you first met. The inventory screen also has tabs so you can see your stories, a timeline of your adventures, a map of the US, and your progress with each of the characters. Maine and New Hampshire, so we're in Maine right now, so we're right at the very top of the United States. Off the road and into the woods, you can't help but come across this package by the old tree tied to a sturdy stick. The cloth wrapping conceals though not particularly well. <clears throat> Something large and softly unsettled. Little eyes blink back at you from inside the bundle. I'm gonna say hello. The shape gives a start. Please don't tell my pa that I'm in here. It says in a small voice. Not. Pa doesn't want to live with us anymore. But I want to go with him. Don't tell him, please. I'm hiding. I won't tell. You tell the boy you'll keep his secret. You don't see his father anywhere. You don't see another soul for miles. Move on. His story, the boy who ran away with his father. That's... That's the... That's the... In this trench. You'll get used to these songs, they're good though. Portland Dork. That's the I'm just gonna pull up the water tastes like Oh I'm so excellent. This is one of the songs I do listen to. This trench was dug for me, is what it's called. Ryan Ike's music is good, and I will never deny that. Or they don't come every year, you know. The old man is sitting at the edge of a rotting old pier crooked legs dangling over the water. He watches a pair of seagulls preen and groom each other on a rock just off the shore. I'm gonna ask why. Just when the fishing is gonna be good. He taps great, black, thick globs of spent tobacco out of a huge ceramic pipe. I got another year, I guess. One more year of what? Another year of this town being here, he replies, letting a grin spread across his face. If the seagulls came, that means enough fish to keep it in place. That actually makes some sense. And this, the seagulls in the kitchen, him. It makes sense though. Um... We're still in Maine. The woman walks the small town square with the poise of Betty Davis. A confident stride, 
and inimitable mannerisms elevating the sidewalk into a plush Hollywood carpet. And wrapped around her neck, a yellow velvet ribbon, bright as an ocean sunrise. What's brown? You question a well-dressed man parked outside an oyster house. Prudish woman. I took her on a fine date and she didn't remove so much as a ribbon. Excuse me, can you step back from the coop? That's the spirit. You decide to seek a second opinion. Imagine that. You talk with a waitress smoking outside a diner. Something funny about her. Just showed up one day. Doesn't work, doesn't live anywhere as far as I know. Just around. Myself. I'd love to know who made all their beautiful clothes. A longshoreman watches Steve Doors load up a crane. Yellow, Yellow ribbon? That woman's dead. Ghost dead. Buddies of mine, they've seen her all over the Atlantic for decades now. The elegant woman, a small town. Oh, did I just miss the opportunity to talk to that woman? Um, inventory. <clears throat> Stories. Priestess. Eagles and the fishermen near Portland, Maine. That's a broken woman. In a small town near Portland, Maine. The woman arrested for bootlegging. Pretty long. He met Dire Wolf collecting his Jew in May. In store. There are 16 people I can meet overall. Okay. You can see storm clouds on the horizon, and you don't relish the thought of being caught wandering this rocky seaside road in the rain. Fortunately, you find the lighthouse door open with a daunting staircase before you. At the top of an ornate wrought iron spiral, you're breathless and feeling the strain on your knees. Rain already batters the walls outside. You can only knock on a heavy wooden door leading into the upper level. Muffled voices and light seep in beneath the door. Your ear to the door. Looks like we got a visitor. Sounds like a man's voice, deep and rough. Well, behave yourself. I'll open the door. Another man, this one with a higher, more sonorous voice. I always behave myself. He feigns indignation, but his tone betrays affection instead. Oh, wait. After a moment, the door unlatches from the inside and opens. The man before you is tall and muscular, with a hint of a paunch beneath his wide chest. The heavy iron knob on the door looks nearly dainty in his huge hand. 
Didn't want to be out in this rain, did you? Come in. Despite the rough exterior, this room looks like a well-appointed parlor. There's a rug on the well-trod wooden floor and an enormously plush couch. And sat upon it is a stocky fellow grinning through a great hazel-colored beard. Tea? He offers, hoisting a teapot. A few years. The tall one sits on the sofa, wrapping his arm casually around the other lighthouse keeper. Five, says the smaller, but by no means small man. That long? Time flies. We traveled together before that. You must have some good stories from the road, huh? I've got some. You wake up the next morning on their old sofa. Still warm from an excess of tea and cakes. There might have been little cakes. Prodigious snoring rumbles in from the floor above you, and, and you quietly take, take your care leave. Of you. The two lighthouse keepers. That's most of what the game is about, just gathering stories. Of the a vagrant song, which is there's like a multitude of variants. I will always hand, I will hand it to Mr. Ryan. The man can make music like nobody else. <clears throat> Honestly, he is nothing short of a legend. There's Boston, Massachusetts. We go from Maine to New Hampshire and then straight into Massachusetts because New Hampshire doesn't really have much of it. New Hampshire doesn't have anything. New Hampshire doesn't really have much at all. So we basically need to just you know, go our whole way across. A dusty truck and a man on horseback pull up next to one another in front of the grocer. Suddenly, the driver and the rider, two wiry old men with identical haircuts, start shrieking at one another. What's going on? The man with the truck leaps into the street. Brother! He shouts. The one on the horse tumbles out of his saddle. Brother! He screams. They embrace in the road. Thirty years! Hollers the driver. The rider, tears streaming down over his face, corrects him. No! Thirty-two! Thirty-two years. Oh, wow. Everyone here is watching these two older men cry and hug one another in the middle of Main Street. Cars and wagons are backing up. People are yelling. Take a photo of us! The driver begs you. Starts hauling a tripod out of the bed of his truck. Hey, cheese. The long-lost brothers pose in front of traffic. Cry snot pouring out of their noses. As angry passerby wave you out of the road, each brother presses a coin into your hand. When the traffic disperses, you realize they overpaid you quite a shocking amount. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm gonna move on now. The two brothers who reconnect after 32 years apart. Boy, take me hand in hand. 
This will be my tale, my vagrant song. I just don't know this guy. Right? Oh, the camps. Okay, that's nice. Pair of bone dice loaded to roll snake eyes nearly every time. Ah, so I'm creating stories and making them different. Two lighthouse keepers. Basically gathering the territory. I definitely want to be the two brothers. Very long. So obviously you met Dire Wolf. Expecting you to do in fifteen to do as a main. The hotel is an old manor house that's seen better days. A grand structure surmounted by a gambrel roof that dwarfs the house itself. It's eerily still, but for two boys at play. Each one so small and light, they barely leave tracks in the deep snow. Watch them. They seem old for their size, around 10 years old. Though their clothes are mismatched, they're perfectly identical, down to the pattern of freckles on their pale cheeks. They conduct their games in eerie silence. The clerk behind the counter is old, and your room key is worn. But night approaches, and the price is low. Just before you shut the room door, there they are, the twins, staring at you from the corridor. Get some sleep. In the morning, as you leave, the clerk asks, Did you sleep well? Tell the truth. Tell the truth? Too tired to lie. You tell him about the noise outside your door. The trampling of small feet on the corridor outside. The dreams disturbed with violent and hideous images. That's odd, he says, weak-eyed. There are no children staying with us. This game is Silent Plans. Remember, I was just a little bitty. Hey there, stranger. You're welcome to enjoy this fire with me, if you're respectful, that is. This here is my spot, and I ain't inclined to share it with any bad characters. You can call me Quinn. These here are my venturing companions. Cass is the big one, and the one with the spots is Flip. I usually beat my way on the rails, but the road news said this town was fat, and the weather was fine. So I'm taking in the sights and seeing what I can drum up. I want to hear a story about ghosts or murderers or something. Scary stuff. Here are the stories you've collected so far. They're organized by subject because the boss likes the tarot card. This is the subject of each story here. If you tell this person a story about love, for example, they will tell you something from their own life relating to the subject of love. Four things. 
As the night goes on, the cycle will move left to right. When it reaches the right side, the night is over, and so is your storytelling. The person you're talking to will usually tell you where they'll be, where they'll be next, so you can find them again. If you tell them the type of stories they request, you'll gain their trust and the eye will open. When it opens fully, the next time you meet them, they'll open up more about their life. They'll remember this from conversation to conversation, so don't feel you need to open the eye all the way the first time you meet someone. Dance around. Know them. Tell the story of the silent You friends. spin a good yarn. I was shivering there for a little bit. Traps and such like. Well, one time in Fort Worth, a feller tried to take Cass and Flip away. Said a kid yeah. couldn't look out for him proper like. That they were fat in Fort Worth and they were going to the pound so that he could find him a good home. Well, before I could much argue, Flip bit the hell out of that busybody and Cass and I joined in shortly. I don't think I ever seen a fellow so surprised. Hmm. Interesting. Guess I ain't going back to Fort Worth no more. Probably not, no. You likely are going back Hey, to do you got any really thrilling stories to tell? I'm hankering for one of those. Well, say. Story of the boy who ran away with his father in Maine. What can we do? What's the use in telling sweet, happy tales if in the make you snooze? My family. There ain't no way I'm gonna start jaw flapping about those bastards. Judas's, the lot of them. Enough said. I wanna hear one of them venturing tales. Got any? Venturing tales, eh? Travel tales. Well, I sure was a downer. Give me a good venture tale instead any day. Traveling. I sure do love it. And I seen some pretty things out there. I seen serpent trains passing on a green and gold sea. I seen mountains so tall and forests so thick, nobody will ever tame them. I once seen a bunch of townies skinny dipping in a river. That sure was something. Okay, that's certainly something. I seen terrible things too. Biblical floods and starving folks. And black blizzards full of dust. Hey. Tell me one of those exciting stories. Do you have anything else? Authority of past memories. The future, maybe? I can't. I think it's gonna work. Well, that was a lively tale. I apparently did. Authority? Bosses and such? I ain't nobody's little Angelina, if that's what you're asking. I take care of myself and my dogs. I don't need no jocker looking out for me. So if you're offering, don't. Shoot, I thought I told you to be respectful. You want to keep enjoying my spot or not? Think about that. You got any stories that are a little sad? Mother. Fuck. The story of the... Portland, Maine. Maybe this is it? I don't get too much out of tales that are so cheerful. Not enough excitement for me. What's my future look like? I ain't looking for a traveling companion, if that's what you mean. I do fine by myself, so just stick to mine in your own. Oh heck, the night's over already. I sure enjoyed talking to you, but I gotta get on. I think I'll see what's happening up the road this way. So they're going up by New York. So they're going up to New York. 
The tramping life suits me just fine. Every day is a venture. With things being so depressed, folks walk around like it's the end of everything good. But it ain't. Plenty nice things to see if you know where to look. The Moonwalk, the Hobo Kid. Quinn, Chapter 2 available. So, we've made progress with Quinn. Okay. This game weighs on you. Pretty heavy. As you walk down the road, a black crow flutters down to land in your path. It looks like you. It looks at you. It pops its head and speaks. Well, you've got a long, long road ahead, don't you? All these people to chase down, or so I hear. It laughs. I got some experience when it comes to chasing folks. Tell me about it. Well, if you want, you can go find your friend again and ask him more about their life. They might want better stories this time, though. Here's up at you. Didn't they tell you where they were headed next? Yeah. But hey, the world is full of people. Bet you could find another friend like that if you went looking around. There's more than one interesting person in this land, for sure. He gives a gravelly laugh. That's what humans say, anyway. With that, it launches in the air, it disappears. Okay. Going back up towards Massachusetts. As of right now, there's really nowhere else to go. Ooh. By nightfall, the hospitality of this sleepy hamlet, combined with their superstitious tales, has both overstuffed your stomach and filled you with a hollow dread. Folks say these woods are full of apparitions, witches, and worse. You curse yourself for getting on the road so late. Walk on. In the moonlight, Every valley and hollow at the feet of the Tappan Zee seems like a stolen shred of the abyss itself. Fireside tales seem less fanciful, and every cackling crow and moaning whippoorwill seems like a demon perched on the shivering, spindly trees. But something cuts through the noise. The muffled sound of hooves galloping on the cold, muddy road. When he finally slows his horse alongside you, 
It's as though he had just appeared out of the mist. I'm gonna go ahead and look at him. He's astride a gigantic black courser. And though his boots are muddy and ragged, he wears an immaculate coat with great shining buttons. From his saddle hangs an antiquated flintlock and a cavalry saber. In the darkness, you can hardly see above his towering shoulders. I greet the rider. His voice is a rumbling croak, deep, but as though his throat is filled with thorns. Have you happened upon a cannonball around here? You can tell English, English isn't, isn't his first language. German is. His hand, so pale it's almost blue in the moonlight, grips the reins in a fist. Let's change the story and how it's made, then. So if I just run away, it's a traveling story. Sorry, I haven't. You mumble an apology and watch as he silently rides away, back into the mist. He's cloaked in black, you notice from behind, but the blood running down over his shoulders glints crimson in the moonlight. On. Right in the woods. His clothes are expensive, but unkempt. A tailored jacket stretched and warped out of its best fit by long days on the road. His thinning frame weighs down the boxcar next to yours. You got a light, friend? Sure. You offer a match, which bends and nearly snaps as he scratches it against the pitted iron edge of the boxcar. Thanks, he mumbles, perching one last cigarette on his lip. Where are you going? Don't rightly know where I'm going. You notice how deeply wrinkled his clothes are. It's as though a huge hand plucked him from a high society party and crumpled him up like a sheet of paper. Don't rightly know how I got going either. Why's that? They built a railway just past Missy Hudson's estate. Damned racket ruined our soiree. Might have been a few bottles of Armagnac too many when I walked down the tracks to tell them to keep it quiet. He drags on the cigarette, but you never see him exhale. I'm gonna move on. The last bottle of almond. You're not gonna try and pronounce that. You come across a girl picking wild blueberries. She smiles and greets you. Anin. She offers you some from her birch bark basket. You reach in the basket for blueberries, 
but pull out a handful of small, smooth stones, all the colors of the rainbow. The snickering girl runs into the trees as fast and light as a rabbit. The stones tumble from your hand and hit the ground, instantly turning black as the night. Your heart leaps in surprise. How strange. How strange. Move on. The girl with the strange stones. <clears throat> Did you ever find that? Cash, a man asks. He just moved in down the street and needs help carrying the box from the curb into the house. Threw my back out this morning. Dives. Lift your leg, that's my tip. Take his advice and it pays you well. That's just a way to get some quick cash, I guess. Possibly one of the most beautiful video games I have ever seen. Yet, it's the weirdest of them all. I'll give it to the. I'll give it to the third. I'll give it to the. The edge of summer has yeah, turned the ocean the choppy and misanthropic, and the skies miserably gray. The boardwalk prophetess lured you into her tent with a promise to read a fortune for free. Seems like business has slowed to a crawl already. It is your table. Before you lie the instruments of a profession. There's tarot cards, Rider Waite, but also Marseille for traditionalists, rosary beads and costume jewelry, and of course, the centerpiece, a great glass globe listen to your fortune with practice theatricality she goes directly for the crystal ball letting her eyes unfocus as though she can see a great distance into it she brings up names I can be a dick. places asks if you've known someone called john if you have a relative in newark I'm a big spirit. You latch on to what she says, and together you dance towards some insights about your romantic prospects. It's relieving to meet an honest charlatan instead of the ghouls and ghasts of the road. You might even say you're having fun until she abruptly stops talking. What's wrong? Your eyes. She says, her voice suddenly drained of the bassy drama that was her stock in trade. You've met him. You've seen him, too. You carry him with you. Oh. Yes. yes. The words that come out of your mouth are not your own. They seem unwilling or unable to form properly out of a human throat. They're more like, like snarls, warning, warning noises of a vicious, vicious animal. animal. I know. The glass globe shatters. Your vision is hazy, and your body is not your own. You 
came far to get away from me, the voice lodged inside you says, but this one has a way of wandering. The fortune teller has collapsed, cowering. Consider your debt to me repaid. Blackout? When you come to your senses, you're lying face down on the rough wood of the boardwalk, sore and weak. An empty patch of wood, cleaner than the surrounding planks, is all that remains of the fortune teller's tent. What the fuck just happened? Move on. Fortune teller and the curse. Wait, what? Did I just kill someone? That's one of the weird ones I need to explain. for a place to camp. We heard there's a Leatherman cave nearby. They tell you. They describe a locally famous vagrant who hiked this area for almost 30 years. He's dead now, but his caves are the best place to camp at any town. Where is it? You and the other wanderers find the cave easily because someone's lit a fire there. As you approach, you see a silhouette bend over the flames with an odd creaking sound, like a door swinging in the wind. He's there. His coat is crudely stitched from leather plates that squeak against each other. The Leatherman, one of the others whispers. A ghost. The Leatherman must have heard, but he just stares. His face is corpse still. Of course he isn't a ghost. Oh shit. He's eating, you say, and point out his can of beans. Je ne suis pas un fantôme, the leather man says and adds. Idiot. Oh, bursts your companion. Canadien? Soon, he and the Leatherman are deep in conversation, and your group has a safe place to rest. <laughs> Move on. The Leatherman's cave. I'm tired looking for a story. Oh, is this friends nearby? I can use this. Cool. If I go down a little. I can't I got them. I can't wait to get around Wisconsin and Iowa. There's only three in Iowa. Yeah, and think that place we full stories. You would think. Of 
cool if I stop when my compass shows up. Women are oblivious to your approach. Their eyes are shut. Their touch, where they hold hands, is gentle. They speak in low tones. One stifles a burst of laughter, but it brings a smile to their faces. Sorry, says the one who laughed. Don't be, another assures her. They don't look up. Quiet. And we give thanks for those who have left us, who we wanted gone, for the skills to thrive without them, and for the companions who make the effort joyful. The voice of the youngest wavers. The woman to her left squeezes her hand. This is not a scene to intrude upon. This is not a scene to intrude upon. Very much so. Move on. The women praying in the wood. Outside the small thicket of apple trees, the phrase tended to by John Chapman is carved into a fence post. Nearby, a hound lies on its side, perfectly still. Flies buzz around its ears. But a grizzled man pauses at his digging to shoo them off. Let them dig. There's an extra shovel. With it, the two of you make short work of the grave. He tells you about his beliefs. Why he's raising apple orchards in the middle of the country. It's a sin to graft. He tells you, hurts the tree. Eventually, the hole is deep enough. He stoops to the ground and lowers the pup into the earth. Tears flow freely. I'll see him again in heaven, he tells you. Our souls are bound by love. He wipes his eyes. I don't think I can bear to stay here, though. Maybe I'll sit out again. Oh. That actually kind of hurts. John Chapman, Orchard, Stall. Here's one. After gossiping for a while about the weather and the crops and the state of the world, all bad and getting worse, he takes a different tack. He looks like someone who likes a good story. He wheezes. Try this one on for size. I'm listening. After loudly and repeatedly clearing his throat, he tells you the story of the fisherman and his fish calling the seagulls. It sounds a lot like the story of the seagulls and the fisherman, but with some parts changed and other parts added. Fail. When he grins up at you, when he grins you, when he grins up at you at the conclusion of the tale, you give him the elusive, you give him the effusive phrase he's apparently expecting. You'll have to remember that version, even if it's not quite what happened. It's a good story. Game's heavy, man. It's it's a hard game to just follow. It 
it's a very hard game. This honestly kind of feels just heavy. Yeah. When by Claris and Siron Stranger, it's good to see you again. You know, I'm gonna see this whole world one day. But for now, I just got my sights set on seeing all 48 of the great U.S. Great U.S. of A. I already seen 10 whole states. That's better than my folks ever done, that's for sure. Plenty of townies and even some tramps treat me like I'm kid simple. But I ain't helpless, and I only act it when I ain't got no better choice. Like if I get pinched. I do right fine on my own. Don't need nobody but Cass and Flip. I want to hear one of them Venturin Tales. Got any? Venturin Tales, eh? I've got more now. Ah, Rabble Tales. They already know the story of Quinn's Adventures. They already know the story of the elegant woman in Small Town. They already know the story of the fisherman and his fish calling seagull. That was a chuckle to be sure. Do you know anything more lively? Faith. Well, I ain't the religious type, though I was raised in the Christian way. I reckon I don't see no point to trust in a god what could squash you in an instant. Oh, this kid. Such a situation don't exactly breed trusting. Hey, do you got any really thrilling stories to tell? I'm hankering for one of those. Hey, so I need to do a thrilling story, eh? Hard to get thrilled. This is the right story, dude. Well, that sure was a downer. Give me a good venture tale instead, eh? Hmm. There you go, talking about family. Like I said, don't need nobody but my dogs. Flip's still a little green. Found him starving and angry by the roadside a few months back. He gets riled now and again, but he don't do nothing too bad if you just wait and let him get it out of his system. He's good to have around most times. And Cash sure seems to enjoy the company. I want to hear a story about ghosts or murderers or something. Scary stuff. This one I can do. Unfortunately, I need to go and do more of, like, finding stuff. You spin a good yarn. I was shivering there for a little bit. Being trapped. Caged. You think beggardom is a prison? No, stranger. Beggardom is freedom. Responsibility is the real trap. Wound tight pride and pretending will bleed folk dry. And then when there ain't nothing left to be proud of, when they can't pretend no more, they'll unwind. Mm. I want a story that scares me. Now I'm older, almost nobody can do it. Give me your best shot. Mm. Fortune teller in the course. Fortune teller in the course of the Northeast, maybe? Wow, that's the stuff, stranger. Spooky campfire tales are my favorite. I remember lots of folks talking about fate and fortune before I started my travels. Talk on the river was about them populists and their Louisiana governor. Some folks say they was up to no good, that they was lazy and un-American, cheating fate with government meddling. 
Others said we all got the right to be kings if we'd only let all folks have a fair shot. I suppose I ain't right in line with neither, but I don't think there's nothing un-American about needing help. Hey, tell me a funny story. You seem like you still got a sense of humor. Maybe. Let's try. Last story I can tell of the night. Not sure I quite follow that one. This country. I don't really know what this thing called America is. I know what I done been told in school, but the words don't fit the picture. What with tramping across the whole thing, figure I'll find out for myself soon enough. Well, sun's coming up, so I've got to get ready to go. Thanks for the tales, friend. Where are you heading next? Decided yet? Maybe our paths will cross. I'm going up the road this way myself. Hope I'll see something fun. I generally do, you know. There's interesting things to see everywhere if you keep your eyes open. So is it every time? Oh, it's only chapter. Goodness me. Nice story. All these stories you can see, but I think I'm gonna leave it here for today, folks. If you guys enjoyed this stream, be sure to let me know. I definitely want to play more of this game. For you. Um. Honestly, the music in this game is addictive, and it's something I want to continue on stream. If this makes you happy and you want to see more, please let me know, folks. And if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, hit subscribe button if you liked it. And if you're on Twitch, please follow me. I will be able to do more content like this. And Having those followers and having those people following me lets me know that you guys enjoy this. Anyways, I will see you all later. Take care, everyone.